What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're going to check out how Adam will book the year of MJF. This should be a very good one. Um, I hadn't checked out a booking uh, episode or video from Adam in quite some time. But I'm very interested to see how he will book the year of MJF. I think this would be uh, pretty fantastic. He's usually pretty good with his booking creative ideas. So I really want to see how he would book mjf and where things would go man uh mjf time is is upon us at some point hopefully before this year's up he will be aew world champion let's get right into this one appreciate all love and support man y'all go subscribe to uh parts fun uh parts fun known and uh show them some love man let's do this thing it's possibly the best professional wrestler in the world based on a certain understanding of professional wrestling first of all he's good at moves you could tell what a wrestler's good at moves because they could do a kip up but for real his match with darby <laughs> allen at full gear 2021 with loki won the matches of the year that's not why people love mjf hi i'm adam by the way hailing from parts well known as uh, adam will build the year of mjf people love mjf because he is committed not necessarily to a w but to himself he has the clearest most defined character in a company whose characters aren't always hugely defined in the mm -hmm. land of super kicks mjf talks and it works <laughs> and it has worked since day one no Max. matter what you wanted from aew if you were a fan of aew's gritty real sports presentation with its rankings and its points mjf was out there negotiating contracts, perma-locking his competitors about a title shot. If you like soap opera storytelling, then MJF versus CM Punk was one of the most Great. nuanced melodramas that wrestling has produced in years. If you like Great. silly, funny AEW, then MJF was out there cutting promos on virgin fans and providing a sense of classic pantomime villainy. MJF's always been this bright, shining, throwback wrestling archetype, mm -hmm. elevated by two things, MJF's own unbelievable charisma, and also that he has the most simple, comprehensive kayfabe yep. in all of wrestling. It's so simple, but it runs to so many hidden depths. He's better than you, and you know it. He has never changed. He has never done that about face turn, that reveal. I mean, right now he's over kind mm. of as a face but he's still openly not giving a sh about any of you and that is that's what makes him great he knows he's over he knows he's mega over and he's taking advantage of i know he said it on a uh, on multiple interviews as a reason but i got devil worshipers they worship me i know that i don't give a fuck it's what i do and it works it fucking works i mean even his initial heel turn was more of an inevitability than a surprise. Like everyone knew MJF was a snake. They yeah. knew he was going to turn. They knew what he was really like and what he has always been really like for years. Every feud he's had has A, gone on a little too long if we're honest, and B, they all feel real relatable mm -hmm. and you always, are desperate for MJF to get his. Cody yep. Rhodes, Darby Allen, Chris Jericho, CM Punk, Wardlow, it's all gold. Every step of the way, MJF is consistent and has been AEW's best original character, him and Hangman Page probably, which is why A, he needs to be the next AEW world champion and B, it needs to be all about how he's gonna leave AEW. See, mm. everyone knows of the ructions between MJF and Tony Khan. But a quick recap for context for the rest of this story. For months before Double or Nothing this year, this outlets up. reported tension between MJF and AEW management, largely built around money. Money. With MJF initially not being offered a large pre negotiation pay rise with his contract expiring in 18 months, coupled with a raft of new former WWE signings in 2021, each being offered considerably higher starting salaries than MJF's starting salary, which was apparently between uh, $40,000 and $70,000, which is, it's for a wrestler. That's not very much. MJF, wow. whose character has always blurred the line between reality and kayfabe, started 
going rogue. He did interviews <laughs> without AEW say so, became more and more outspoken online with it coming to a dramatic head around Double or Nothing this year with MJF mm -hmm. no showing a meet and greet at AEW Fan Fest for Double or Nothing with it seeming suddenly a distinct possibility that he might no show Double or Nothing, mm -hmm. AEW's version of WrestleMania, and he might not turn up to his marquee match against the Diesel to his Shawn Michaels, Wardlow. Uh, it sucked for Wardlow, whose rise to the top was tarnished by all this drama. Uh, yeah. MJF did show up, he did do the job, and then he cut a pipe bomb, trademark, where he called Tony Khan, <laughs> admittedly this was very funny, a f***ing mark. Easily, uh, it's, it's going to be a, a promo that lives on in infamy. People are going to be talking about this promo 20 years from now. It was one of the best promos we had seen in so long. <laughs> it, 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 bro, the lines of reality, what's real, what's fake, completely blurred. Begged him to fire him and then disappeared for months. Was taken off the roster page. His merch was removed. Like they really committed to this bit. He returned to All Out, was handed the Joker chip without wrestling. Nice touch. Yeah. And has ascended to a very strange position in that he is a prick. He's still a prick who calls himself Salt of the Earth, which was originally ironic because he's a privileged f who buys his way out of every problem. But in the wake of all this stuff that's kind of come out about AEW, in the wake of Cody leaving, in the wake of the EVPs getting into a fight with CM Punk, yeah. a top champion who seems to openly hate working for a company he used to lavish with praise, in a time when AEW is in a bit of a PR crisis with yeah. a backstage system that's emerged as chaotic at best and toxic at worst, then MJF's tenure with the company and also the fact that he basically quit for a bit rather than deal with all this bullshit. It, it's elevated him to being unironically kinda the soul of the earth. His consistency and a sudden surge of feeling that about AEW, CM Punk and himself, MJF was right. He's emerged as one of the last true bridges between the current slightly messy, slightly scrambling AEW mm -hmm. and the assured, confident AEW of years ago. Ironically, for a man who's been the most vocally anti-AEW all year, he, along with John Moxley, is the biggest AEW guy they've got. He Facts, bro. Yeah. Outside of John Moxley, um, he's like, there is it's MJF. And that's why I say I understand why they went John Moxley as the champion, MJF being the guy to hold the chip, potentially cashing in on John Moxley. It just makes sense. John Moxley, they, in AEW, they love him. You know what I'm saying? And understandably so. He is their top guy. And MJF, right now, he, he's the guy, bro. He he is the he's the man. We're just waiting for when they pull the trigger. But people want to see him as champ, even though he's a piece of garbage. I want to see him as champ because I know whatever feud he gets into, it's going to be good, bro. He's going to make you care. Needs to be the next champion. Needs to dethrone John Moxley soon is why it's a good idea. It's John Moxley, not Brian Danielson. Yeah. Needs a long reign to bring stability back to the company. Looking 2023 it, I, 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 it makes is going to be the year of MJF. How should it happen? Let's get into it, man. Let me have a go. All because right. I'm better at booking than you. As you know. <laughs> oh, that was Peace cringe, out. but uh, it's cool. <laughs> He's the go to booking right now. MJF He's versus John Moxley goes. for the title takes place at full gear. Because, of course, mm -hmm. it does. The pay per view is taking place in New Jersey, which is close oh. enough to New York, close enough to MJF's home people. And the feud is simple Moxley is the champion that AEW needs, Beats. MJF is the champion that AEW deserves why are you even here mox mjf asks you should be on vacation bud you should be on a beach somewhere smashing a coconut into your skull because god forbid you spend the day without bleeding <laughs> you happy about all this john with you bailing tony out again and again and again i'm gonna take that AEW championship off you john boy because over your shoulder it's a shame 
It's a quick fix. It's a happy face sticker plastered over a widening crack in a foundation. AEW needs to suffer for what it's done, and I'm going to make it suffer. Tony sure. got scared. Tony realized he was losing control of his locker room, so Tony invited the devil into his house, and he'll wish he never did. You're not a hero, John. You're an enabler, mm. and I am the intervention. Remember that word. All right, so quick thing before we talk about Full Gear. Mm. Let's talk about the firm. I do, I just, now, oh. one, one <laughs> hand, I think it's an interesting idea. After the inner circle and the pinnacle sort of just ending, MJF having a faction on tap that he pays for who will do what he wants, but he's not really in, that's, it's interesting. Yeah. On the other hand, the firm kind of sucks right now. Existing solely to help another man is cool for that man, but it's kind of lame for Everybody, everyone else uh, in the group like yeah. i know they've said what they all want that like, i actually ha wait no i actually have no idea what w morrissey wants and evidently neither does stokely hathaway but it's they're all so disparate it feels lifeless uncohesive and not really much to do with mjf so i'm not going to use it sorry <laughs> firm in the lead up to full gear the firm beats up John Moxley, but Mox managed to get them banned at ringside by beating W. Morrissey in a match. So they feature in the story, but after that, we move our separate ways. MJF versus Moxley is one-on-one. -on -one. You want this belt? Mox says, you'll have to beat me like a man. Also, side note, before Full Gear, MJF shouldn't wrestle a single time. At Full Gear, MJF wins, but he wins cheap. The ref goes down, mm. Mox hits the Death Rider, visual win, but Mox grabs the diamond ring from his tight, hits John Moxley, but only gets a two. He grabs Mox up, puts him on his shoulder, and hits him with a go to sleep. Covers Mox with a one, two, three. MJF uh, wins that would be pretty cool. the AEW Championship. <laughs> MJF cuts a promo with a belt on Dynamite, where he establishes, because I imagine people will cheer for his win at full gear, yeah, but he's still very much a heel. He did not do this for all the AEW smart marks. He did it for the one thing he actually cares about money money again and to see tony's face when he sits across the negotiation table when mjf tells him you either pay me the most money out of anyone in this company scratch that anyone in this industry if you don't mm. i am taking your belt <laughs> to the fed because i will never lose this title. Mox and MJF have a rematch. You want to fight dirty? Then welcome to my world, says Mox. That winter is coming. MJF versus John Moxley lights out. Of Typical course. death match, but towards the end of the match, two giant men enter the ring through the crowd. They turn, reveal themselves to be Lance Archer and Brian Cage. Two men who can also claim to have been passed over by AEW in favor of former WWE guys, two mm. men who have been made promises that have since been broken. They kill John Moxley. They literally write him off TV, break his arm, break his neck, something truly not horrible, Woo! probably not break his neck. Yeah. Wednesday, <laughs> the 4th of January, 2023, Dynamite. MJF introduces himself and his heavies. Once upon a time, I was happy to be the pinnacle of AEW. Mm. I realized that's the same as being the world's most hygienic wrestling fan. It's a statement that amounts to practically nothing. We are no longer content to be the pinnacle of AEW. We are the intervention that AEW so desperately needs. He announces this will be the year of MJF. This mm. is my last year in AEW. On January 1st, 2024, my contract expires. Damn. And Tony has until then to fundraise. He has until then to stump up the kind of cash that I deem to be acceptable. He has until then to run to his daddy and ask him to up his pocket money. You, Damn. Tony, you, my dude, took the best thing going in the industry and you shuffled him down the car, didn't you? The devil never forgets. This 
is my updated contract. This entitles me to set my own terms for the duration of my stay in this amateur promotion. So Damn. this is a message to the locker room. Take a number, boys, and try your best. But here's the sitch. You get one shot at the champ. One. You tell me when you're ready, but if you lose, you are done. You don't get to challenge me again for as long as I am AEW mm. champion. Oh, and one more thing. This offer, this title match offer, it's open to whomever I deem to be AEW talent. I oh. refuse to defend this title against someone from over there. Because if one of you idiots actually lucks into a W on the best thing going, then it's going to be an AEW guy. Because somehow, some way, I care more about this place than Tony does. I'm going to mm. hold this title forever. And if my demands aren't met at the negotiation table at the end of the year, I'm going to take it and I'm going to defend it in the main event of WrestleMania. Because <laughs> Oh, this this is this is fucking gold. I like this. <laughs> I'm Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than AEW, and you know it. Ah. And that is the brief for MJF's title run. You get one chance. No one can challenge for the title more than once. He is going to burn through all of AEW's homegrown talent in a weird love hate relationship he has with the company. One that kind of mirrors the idea of MGF, that he mm -hmm. hates AEW, yet he gives the company his best work. He wants to prove he is better and worth more than every AEW guy. But if he's going to be beaten, he doesn't want it to be by a former Fed guy. He is a complicated man. He is the salt of the earth. First up, MJF versus Eddie Kingston mm, at Revolution. Off the back of MJF crippling Moxley, first up to feud with him is Eddie, not necessarily an AEW original, but someone who did indeed rise to a more mainstream level because mm -hmm. of the promotion. Someone who's occasionally taken on the mantle of AEW locker room leader. Also, Eddie Kingston, MJF promos, cool. yes. Sign yes. me up. Yes, please, yes. Yes to all of it. MJF retains at Revolution with the intervention of the intervention to, to get it next up at double or nothing mjf versus wardlow one year on from their exhibition squash one year on from all that drama mjf agrees to face wardlow for the title on one condition that he vacates the tnt championship because when mjf beats wardlow at double or nothing he's going to be left with, with nothing. nothing because without mjf being in wardlow's world that's precisely what wardlow is nothing MGF retains mm. through a series of shenanigans. Of course, Lance Archer and Brian Cage hold Wardlow, and MGF just hits him over and over and over again with the diamond ring. Ten times, in fact. One for every powerbomb MGF took the year before. Earlier in the show, Brian Cage and Lance Archer win the tag team championships. The intervention has all of the original titles from when AEW began. Next up, after okay. conquering Wardlow in the latest foreshadowing and parallel between MJF and a certain second city saint, and if you haven't seen these parallels already, then I don't know how many more pipe bombs MJF needs to cut for you. MJF, he declares a summer of MJF, <laughs> and he's gonna prove what he's known all along. He's gonna do a victory lap. He's gonna defeat every single member of the four pillars of AEW. Mm. A concept he created, a concept he's going to destroy. He defeats Sammy Guevara at Fighter Fest, Jungle Boy Jack Perry at Fight for the Fallen, and then on the road to All Out, he feuds with Darby Allen. MJF tells Darby that he's only been relevant when he's faced MJF, CM Punk, mm. or by tagging around with that walking skeleton sting. Now at all out. Sting helps to run off the rest of the intervention when the ref goes down. And after a full year away from AEW, cult of personality hits and CM Punk returns in Chicago. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Punk mm. returns to the pay-per-view where he debuted against Darby Allen, to the pay-per-view where MJF stood up the ramp from him and prophesied doom a year before. And he picks up Darby Allen on his shoulders, hits him with the GTS. Oh. MJF retains with the help of oh, CM Punk. That's crazy. The next Dynamite, Punk and MJF come face to face in the ring. The first words that Punk ever said into a mic against MJF were the words, 
I am so disappointed in you. Punk's first words into a mic to MJF after a year off. I am so proud of you. Oh. Punk and MJF form an alliance. CM Punk will gladly be part of this poison pill because he finally sees MJF was right. Right about AEW, right about CM Punk. This company sucks. <laughs> because if he's ever gonna work for AEW again, we can't really ignore what happened. Yeah, bro. They got a plan too. He can't be like, oh, guys, I'm great to be back. You got, he would have to be a fucking heel. He would have to. He would have to shit on the company in a storyline manner that makes sense because you can't have him come back as a babyface. It's just not going to work. But also it goes deeper than that. MJF is telling truth to power just like Punk did. Punk left WWE in January 2014, 10 years later. To the month, Punk will help MJF do the same in AEW. Because this mm. company sucks, says Punk. Better the devil you know. We'll be out of here. Thanks for the money, idiots. With Punk <laughs> at his side, that's when you run MJF against the next two people. The kind of last two bastions of AEW. Hangman Adam Page mm -hmm. and Kenny Omega. MJF versus Hangman Page at Grand Slam. Because now Page really is defending AEW from Punk and MJF. This will hopefully feel a little better in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Really sorry, Colt Cabana, about all the things. So Paige loses, mm -hmm. then finally a feeling of last chance saloon at full gear, one year on from MJF winning the title, the last pay-per-view of the year. This sentiment that's been building for this entire year, we have to get the title off MJF. The entire locker room is gathering around Kenny Omega, the champion of AEW, the man at the heart of it all, the man whose match against Chris Jericho was the starting gun for all elite wrestling, the man who, in all the horrible mess surrounding Punk at All Out, his chief contribution was apparently saving Punk's f***ing dog. MJF <laughs> versus Kenny Omega. During the match, the entire locker room swarms the ring to help take out Punk and the intervention. They run them off. Omega hoists MJF up for the one-winged angel, but MJF nails him in the head with the ring. Kenny falls, MJF lands on him, pins Omega, one, two, three. Mm. The last chance has failed. MJF takes to the mic in the middle of the ring. He calls out Tony Khan, I've done it all. I've, be I've beaten them all. All the AEW originals now, you'll have to pay me all the money in the world or I am gone and I am taking this title with me. Out comes Tony Khan, congratulates MJF, but reminds him they still have one big event left of the year. Winter is coming and he's had to pull out all the stops because desperate times call for desperate measures. And this is where we get truly fantasy booking with it. Bear <laughs> that in mind. Fantasy I'm just brilliant. doing what excites me the most from a storyline perspective. As soon as Tony says that, the lights go out. Silence. Wrestling has more than one royal family. Cody Rhodes oh, returns <laughs> to AEW and he's going to do it this is for super one fantasy. night only at Winter is Coming. MJF, the man who betrayed Cody in order to enact this stipulation, argues that Cody can't challenge for the AEW title. That was under Cody's old contract. That contract expired. This is a new contract for one night only. Cody Rhodes is returning to the promotion he started to save it from the devil. At Winter is Coming, Cody Rhodes finally beats MJF. He lays the AEW title in the middle of the ring and he gets to say a proper goodbye. The goodbye to AEW that he never really got to make. He vacates the belt and he walks away, which opens the door for two things. MJF, humiliated and beaten after a year-long reign of terror, can re-sign with AEW because his AEW career can't end this way. Or he can actually leave. Sign yeah. with WWE and there's an inbuilt feud with Cody Rhodes this waiting is true. to happen right there do think. i think any do i think this would actually happen you know it's not impossible it's a big advert for wwe and you know paul's a clever man is it likely no, no. what's more <laughs> likely is probably brian danielson no, which yeah. no one would hate no. to be fair just doesn't yeah. quite fit in with the story i'm telling here yeah. uh what could provide the best narrative closure maybe wardlow but sorry 
This is my story, my video. That's how I would cap off the year of MJF. What do you think? That yeah, wasn't bad, it. man. That once he said Cody, I was like, oh yeah, this is mega fantasy. Everything else I could have worked with. Everything else you could put in the of realm of reality that they could actually do something with that. Once he said Cody, I was like, nah. I would love that. I would love if WWE threw a that's WWE throwing AEW a bone. We know they won't do that, but if they just decided to, that's WWE throwing AEW a bone. But one thing about WWE, they're going to look out for themselves. They're going to do things that's going to line their pockets. So the only thing I could possibly see is MJF coming over to WWE and they continue a feud there. But that hurts AEW because people are going to want to see that feud on WWE television. So that would never probably happen. Well, you can't say, you can never say never. You never know, but... I, I, I like the story he told there. That was pretty cool. I'm all for MJF just holding the title hostage, beating people up in heel-like fashion, and seeing where they go. I do think... Um, let me rephrase that, because I, I know when, pe when you say holding the title hostage, some people get a ne negative connotation to that. I mean, in the sense of no one should be beating him. The only time he should drop that belt is when someone is like super white hot like i'm talking about mega over and it makes sense for him to drop it and the only time i can see him ever dropping it is if he's about to leave the company if he's legit gonna leave the company i can see him dropping it there because i'm telling you this now in wwe oh they're gonna throw money at him they're gonna throw money especially if the ratings go up because he's head of champ and people want to see him Oh, they're going to give him millions of dollars. They're going to throw money. But Tony Khan could rebuttal and throw some good money at him as well. So we will see. But I, I like this video. This was pretty cool. Comment down below. Let me know. <clears throat> did you guys enjoy uh, the way Adam booked the year of MJF? Me, personally, I think it was pretty good. The last one is the last part. Definitely not believable. But still, overall, a good fantasy booking of this whole situation. But I appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.